Welcome to the Dirty Bird Nation Report, the unofficial official podcast of Falcons Twitter. I had to drink some tea. My voice is killing me because everybody wants to talk on the phone during this quarantine. And it's hours, it's hours at a time that people are calling me. And now my voice hurts. So I have tea. Anyways, we are here today with a, if you're an OG, you know who this person is. He has his own podcast now, which we're all going to support our boy, Jamel. What's up, man? How you been doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. No problem. Man, so you got your own show now. Tell us a little Mm -hmm. bit about it. So I've been wanting to do this for the longest. I had put it on hold for a minute. I was trying to get everything together. Now is the perfect time with the whole quarantine. We all can't go nowhere. I can't work right now. So I'm like, hmm, now it's the perfect time to, you know, try and get my podcast off the ground. So right. basically, the, the name of it is Flag on the Play. Make sure y'all go subscribe to the channel, Flag on the Play. It's built just like High Town. Um, even though I am a Falcons fan, all fans are welcome. Everybody's welcome. Uh, college football, NFL, all of that. So that's pretty much the the justice of it. All right, yeah, I'm already subscribed. We are already subscribed. Everybody else needs to go subscribe and let us know that you subscribe. And the first person to let us know that you subscribed is going to get some Falcons merch. That's it. You're going to get some Falcons first merch. We need proof that you subscribe to yes. Tag on the Play. Yes, flag on the play, spelt just like I sounds. Yep, and you'll get some Falcons merch from us. Uh, we're going to mail it with some fucking hand sanitizer, a little baggie of hand sanitizer, <laughs> and a fucking lights <laughs> my wipe. All right? Because yeah, you ain't going to sue me. Right. <laughs> Talk about she, got, she gave me the Rona. Fuck out of here. Right. So let us know. All yeah. right, man. It has been quite an off season. Yes. And we haven't talked to you about it. Uh, we got Hooper gone, Freeman gone, True yep. Funk gone. And then the rest yeah. of the people we really don't care about. So how did you right. feel about all those people having to leave our our great team? Um can't say I didn't can't say that I'm not surprised. The majority of us saw this coming. Now, the one that really kind of caught me by surprise was Desmond Trufant. I thought we maybe keep him around for this season. Then I thought next season we was going to move on from him. Mm-hmm. As far as like everybody else, Freeman and Hooper kind of saw that coming. Couldn't afford to resign Hooper because we were a little short on the money. And then Freeman. Fan of his, but couldn't stay healthy, you know, with the concussions and just couldn't stay on the field. So that did not come as a surprise. You know, wish all those guys the best of luck with wherever they go. And yeah, man. Hey, that's that. More power to him. Best of luck to him. Yeah, those were our, our major, major losses. Uh, we recently lost Claiborne. And is that it? Yeah. As far as somebody else, it's significant. Yeah. But as far as Claiborne go, he's he's replaceable. Yeah, we, we got his ass out of the paint. <laughs> I, I, re- I like Claiborne. Don't get me wrong. I like, I like Claiborne. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people were fighting with him on social media. Because he was responding back. So y'all were big and bad, all caps fighting back with him. So I know some yeah. of y'all are happy to see him gone. But, I mean, I can't lie. I'm I'm going to miss him because he was kind of kind of effective. So, um, Oh, kinda. by the way, uh, uh, yeah, Devondre Campbell no longer with, with us too. Uh, that's I, – I was like, there's someone with a C that I'm just missing. Yep, he's gone. Uh, oh. How do you feel about Vic finally getting out? We haven't talked to you since then. Mr. Vic Beasley. I think it was a foregone conclusion. About 95% of us saw that happening too. 
You know, yeah. although he had a he had a decent year. He picked up second half of the year. He did. But he's kind of day late, dollar short. Like, had you done that in the past two or three years, you'd probably still be around. Still be around with a fat ass contract. Right, because he had what eight, nine sack, if I'm not in my memory yeah. service. Yeah, it was yeah. A, it was more than six. I remember that much. I know it was more than that. He had like eight, nine sacks. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. had a he had a decent year, but like I said, it's kind of like, okay, where was this before? And he started off slow. Just imagine had he started out the way he ended the season. Oh yeah. Look, we yeah. would all apologize to him. Yes, he had like 13, 14 cents easily. So and he started the season the way he finished. Right. But he was, I don't know. I don't know what his problem was. Who knows? Like, the thing with him is like he has it. He has potential. You can see it. It's just that he doesn't apply it. He doesn't. Maybe he needs the right coaching staff, but. It seemed like he had so much potential. He was just lazy. lazy. That's what he was. Right. Lazy and disrespectful shit. Like, you have so much untapped potential. Like, why aren't you? It's like he refused to work. Work Like, bro, like you got Chuck Smith in your backyard. Why don't you go use that to your advantage? Chuck fucking Smith. And it don't make no sense how Grady Jarrett Works with Chuck Smith at least and once see, a week. And you see how that worked out. Yeah, but nobody could convince Vic to go work with him. Right. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm like, that that's that is so weird. Like none of y'all were like, boy, get your ass in gear. Come on. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure a lot of people talking that. Heck, him and, him, and, him and Grady Jerry were best buddies. They went to college together. Came, they came to the team together. Like, but hey, you can only offer so much help. It's up to him to take it. Right. Oh, well, now let's see what the Titans can do with him. Do we play right. the Titans this year? I think so. I'm not sure. Maybe I have to check the schedule again. Right, I damn schedule shit. Hopefully, we have a fucking season. I mean, golly, with the way everything's going, who knows? Um, you're a Georgia fan, right? Yes, my whole life. Oh That's yeah. Easy. So, what you think of us getting your boy, Todd? Todd. Oh, Todd, Todd. At first, I'm like, you know what though? I'm 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 glad of the deal we gave. I say, if we we're going to bring him in, it would have to be on a proven deal. I'll tell a buddy of mine that he's a Panthers fan. I'm mm-hmm. like, the only way I'll bring him in here if it's on a proven deal. And literally, like an hour later, that's exactly what happened. I said, you know what? That's the only way. That's about what I would have gave him. So if he does well, I'll play it. He need to resign him. If not, hey, it's low risk, high reward. Right. No risk, high reward. So, hey. Yeah, I, w- I was shocked as hell that it actually happened. I, right. I didn't even think it was going to happen at all. Like, I was like, there is no way. Right. No way that he's going to come here. Like, are you kidding? But they said yeah. Julio went to his house and was I'm like, just, come I'm just about to bring that up. Like, and to hear that Julio played a part of him coming here. Yep. Ain't that crazy? Crazy. crazy. Julio played a part of him coming here. Like I for sure thought he was being Miami, but shout out to Julio, and I hope right. I hope he works out here too. Oh, me too. You know, you know, I'm a homer. And you know, I want to see it. I want anybody want to see it happen is me. Yeah, Just think about it. Last season he had 800 yards with a, you know, he wasn't even 100. percent He had 800 yards. Right. On a banged up knee. Now this is just imagine had he been healthy. Here a whole lot. As long as we keep beefing up that O line, we we got some um, someone from the Browns. Yeah, I mean, I say uh, the right side of the line is just fine. 
Caleb Graham, Chris Nissen, those guys are going to be Pro Bowl offensive line. I'm calling mm-hmm. that like I think they're going to be Pro Bowl offensive line. Mm-hmm. Especially Chris Nissen. He's going to be good. Very good. We just got to get that left side. Like, Jay can't do it by himself. Right. <laughs> he needs some help. And and oh yeah, speaking of Jake, Josh, I know he was real like he felt the kind of, he did not care for Jake Matthews at all. <laughs> he did not. I'm like, dude lived up to his cut. Look, he played well. And this was after he had got his money. He's still playing well. He's been balling his whole time here. Yeah, he's he's playing better than what we think. Like if you look at the numbers uh he's playing a lot better than what we see with our eyes we're like oh shit there he goes again there he goes again making a mistake we just keep focusing on his mis- his mistakes that he makes throughout the game instead of what he's been doing uh but he yeah he needs help he's he's not the best but he's not the worst either listen i think the year he got his brand new contract he only gave up one sack. I think this past year, he only gave he didn't give up that many as well. So he's been doing his job. He hasn't given up a whole lot of sacks. It just looks like that because of who he's playing with. Right. That left guard position. We've never been able to get that position right at left guard. Uh, hopefully we can this draft or before the draft. Um right. Or before the whatever, whatever the fucking cut off the June first thing. Oh, June first, yeah. But let me ask you this though, like, okay, out of everybody we picked up in free agency, who like, who was you most surprised that came here? Todd Gurley for sure. For me, it was Dante Fowler. I did not expect him to come here. Like, <laughs> I was like the happiest person in the world. Really, Fowler was I surprised? I wasn't oh, really yeah. surprised with Fowler because I think I remember I remember hearing people talk about it before, and then some rumor that one of my coworkers said there was like Fowler wants to come here, so I wasn't surprised about that just because I heard through the rumor mail. Um, but Todd, I never heard at all. Like his name was never brought up in the rumor mill or anything. So that's why it was Todd for me. But Fowler, I I was very excited. I didn't think it was going to happen though, but I wasn't surprised that it did happen. But when it happened, I was like, okay. All right. I mean, that man, he he was a beast last year. And this year he said he wants a to beat Michael Strahan's single season sack. That Tay Fowler? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, think he can, I think he can do it. I think so. Well, I don't know. Well, uh, that's I a lot of sacks. But just don't – I don't even need that. Just give me what you did last year. Yeah, what was it, 12? 11. Yeah, 11 sacks. 12. Just give me that. I'll be okay with that. Right. I'm like, boy, you talking about – I think Strahan had 22.5. 20, yeah, 22 sacks. In one season? Yes. Just give me half that. Right. I, I, don't, I don't need no 22 now. That's a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, I don't think nobody's going to do that no time soon. Yeah, I said, because um, he interviewed with, I think, Kelsey. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, um, what I say? I was like, oh, he he. Nobody warned him about Falcons fans because if he don't get more than twenty two sacks, they about to flame him out of here. I was like, he should have never said that. They about to flame him. You know, Falcons fans be crazy as hell. Like, well, trust me, I know. But he said that was a goal of his. He didn't say he's actually going to do it. Like, he just said that was just something he would like to do. Like. Uh, you know, Falcons fans don't care. They they barely read and comprehend. Not no, all. No. Like I said, if he gives me eleven, if he gives me somewhere between ten to maybe twelve, 
I'll be okay with that. Between 10 and 12. Man, I'm... See, now, I'm if you get more than, than hey, I'll be okay with it, but I that would be great, but just give me 10 to 12. Oh, yeah, I'm good with nine, to be honest. Nine, and as long as you're helping the pass rush, if you're bringing in that pass rush for us, hey, that's all we need. Um, so let's talk about I, I, my thing is, and me and Bree, shout out Bree, uh, me and her talk about this a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to keep that same energy with Tack now because he's been underperforming. Let's talk about it. He's been underperforming. He has. Let's, let's he go. has. Let's discuss. We now. High with him. I know. And I love him. I, me too. I, 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 I love me Tack, too. but. Me too. Like, you can tell he wants to, he wants to do well. Yes. He just kind of put it all together. He does. He says it. He like punishes himself when he doesn't yes. do well, which I like about a person. I don't, you shouldn't overly punish yourself when you don't do a good job, but I like that he's like, he admits it and he's like, I'm going to do what I need to do to correct it. But something. I took my, my water. Hmm? No, I'm, I'm coughing because I choked on my water. Oh, boy, don't you be choking over there now. <laughs> um, yeah, with Tack, I, I hope he really does get it together. And what people have been saying, people as in the Falcons, the real Falcons experts have been saying with a veteran on the line that plays on the opposite side should of, of Tack should help him improve and get to where he um, used to be. So I'm hoping that that does come true because I do really like Tack. I love the energy that he brings um, and his antics. I mean, I I thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, right. I know a lot of fans were upset because he was like, I want to go to the Cowboys, but it's like, bruh. Y'all, y'all keep cussing him out every five seconds over stuff. Why wouldn't he want to leave a team whose fans just give him nothing but hate? Right. Like, think about it. Stop giving the man hate. Like, he's trying. You know. To do <coughs> and that plays, huh? And that plays a big part on free agents because they see that. Mm -hmm. They see. That's why a lot of people don't want to come here because of stuff like that. Like, yeah. we got to do a good job as fans here and not be so, you know, just stop causing so many problems with these players. Cause they see that. Yep, like all last season right. when people were doing stuff, and the Falcons were doing giveaways. Some of the players were like, fuck that. Take my name off of this. They don't deserve right. shit. Like, y'all right. got to stop. Y'all got to really cut cut that bullshit out. Now, I understand. Ain't no wrong with holding players accountable. But it's how you do it. Right. I mean. It's how you do it. Granted, back in the day, I was pretty bad. I wasn't as bad as y'all. But I would I can admit I was bad. But I'm not as bad as y'all y'all people are. Um y'all be used to give him hell for problems. Yes. <laughs> used to give him hell. <laughs> he got on my damn nerves. I was a big fan of him though, but he got on my nerves. But yeah, y'all gotta stop that and then be like, go play for somebody else. And then you're mad when the, we have their boo-boo replacement like right, right now we stuck with Oliver as one of the cornerbacks hey. like hey hey let's pop the brakes on Oliver okay I like Oliver <laughs> you gotta realize this was his first year starting and not to mention you know he looked a lot better once Raheem Morris took over that's true but, but before you know, that it was like bro 
What it was coaching. are you doing? It was coaching. Look yeah. how he looked. Man. Look how he looked when Dan Quinn had the defense. And then look at him when Raheem Morris took over. It was night and day. It was like that with the whole defense as a whole. The whole yeah. defense as a whole looked better once Dan Quinn gave up uh, his defensive coordinator duties. God damn. Why? Why? It's just, it is mind boggling that our entire, our GM, our owner, our president, and everybody would continue to let Dan Quinn sink sink the defense for eight fucking games Mm -hmm. before they made him give it up. Like, that to me is like, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me? Because you, and we all see how the season completely turned around as soon as he gave it up, right? Like, and then, and then we we keep him, and I'm just like, Doc, And I know it's the last straw. I I saw the stupid ass twenty minute videos, but still, like, why would y'all? Y'all do this. We wasted half a season. We wasted eight games of Matt Ryan. We wasted eight games of Julio. We wasted eight games of Hooper. Like eight games of Grady Jarrett. Like every major talent had eight games completely wasted because of y'all. Like, oh, okay, hold on. Seven because Philly game. Seven games. Who Philly was our only win seven games of completely wasted talent. Like, right. I, what is this? I don't. I don't know. I know our front office needs a major change because, like, that's some bullshit. Complete bullshit. That, and then we go back to the Sark thing. Like, you let him hire his friend. Now look at us. Like, you know, it's just one thing after other of questionable decisions that is really pissing me off. Now, if things decide to change, turn around somehow by a miracle this season, okay, still not trusting y'all, but all right. But if they don't, like, there we go, another year, just flush down the toilet. My money flushed down the toilet. My time, my energy just flushed down the toilet. So, uh. so let, me, let me ask you this. If we start out, let's say, one and three or, you know, one and four, does Arthur Blank fire Dan Quinn during the season or does he wait to the end of the season? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know because – we're not that team to do that. However, with the videos he put out, it's <clears throat> possible that he'd do it. Like I say, don't even, I say, don't even wait that long. If we go one and two, I'd do it. <laughs> hey, fuck that. Hey. He said, we are pulling the trigger off yeah, one and two. I, I pull it. <laughs> I mean, a bit of a stretch or reach, but hey. And I think, well, I hope with that video that they put out, that they have a set list of coaches in mind to take over. <clears throat> well, as far as an interim basis to get through the season, let Raheem Morris do it. If he does well, I would keep him on long term as my head coach. Yeah, I wouldn't be mad at Raheem Morris because they seem to listen to him. Yeah. And respect him. But of course, that's from us looking from afar. (laughs) But what it appears to be like. So, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at that. 
Oh, right. not at all. Um, I don't want – I don't know who else I want as a coach because I haven't paid attention. Like, last year I was just so right. upset. <laughs> I just stopped really watching <laughs> games <laughs> unless I was going to the bar. Um, and I work, I work at the stadium, so I had no choice but to see that. Ooh, that sucks. I went to the Philly game. Did I go to a game after the Philly game? I don't think so. I think the Philly game was the only game that I went to. That's crazy. Right. Wow. Oh, well, well at least we won that one. Oh, I was there. <laughs> but um, what is going on this offseason? Uh, oh, God. A topic that's just annoying me, even though I tweet them every day about it. Uniforms. <sighs> <laughs> I want to know what they look like. I am getting impatient. I am tired. And I want to know if I can buy more liquor or if I'm going to buy a jersey. <laughs> so. I will say this because I do have a little birdie. Right, because I do work at the stadium, and I did get me a little sneak peek. Ooh. I did get me a sneak peek. I'm not going to disclose the information on who I got it from. I don't want to put them on the map like that. But I did give me a little sneak peek. You are going to love them. Oh. You are. You are going to love them. Trust me. You're going to like them. Yeah. <clears throat> I will say that much. And there is no logo change, right? They tweaked it for the most part. It's just a matter of tweaking for the logo, but nothing like too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Okay. But you are gonna like them. They're they're nice. Oh, good. Kind of hard to explain. Everybody keep asking me, especially Bree. She always what did I say? I can't really explain. <laughs> <laughs> can't really explain. Like you have to. <laughs> you gotta see them. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things where you got to see it to. Yeah, but you are going to like it. All right. And I heard they're a re, uh, modern 1997. I can neither confirm nor deny. But Damn it. <laughs> can neither confirm nor deny. But again, you are gonna, everybody's going to be. Well, not you know, Falcons Twitter is never satisfied. You have some that are going to be like, eh, but for the most part, y'all don't like it. Good shit. <laughs> I need someone to send me a goddamn picture because I, I just I need to one letter. They want letters, like, because they don't want them to leak. Right. Because you know people will leak them. Yes. You know how that is. Right. But yeah. So we are going to love these uniforms. Yes. Nope. Are there any crazy color ways? Nothing like, nothing like crazy. That'll make you. It ain't Jacksonville crazy. Put it like that. Okay, but it's yeah. Black, it's nice. silver, red, still. Yeah, yeah, they're nice though. Yeah, like it ain't like Jacksonville crazy. Where it's just like okay, it try to be a little too different. Okay, so still similar. Yeah, very similar. Same colors. Different. Yeah, similar but different. But not too different. It didn't go all the way different. Like There's a slight tweak. Yes. And slight, no tweak. slight tweak and nothing we've really seen before. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Mm -mm. Say it again. That I'm said I'm not mad at that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cause people are just lying on the internet. You know how that is. Lord. What I see <laughs> the the craziest shit last night that I saw was the uniforms were gonna be an urban themed hip hop inspired jersey. No. I no. was like ain't no way in Hell, the NFL 
is going right. to allow us to have some urban hip hop jerseys. Are you right. kidding? Right. Like, Come on now. <laughs> and people are <laughs> really believing it. And they said, uh, they said uh, Atlanta rappers came in to help design them. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, and people were believing it. And then they said rappers, including Andre 3000. Oh boy. I said, are you fucking serious? Andre first of all, 3000. Three first of all, we, the man first of all, that is going around playing the flute in the airport and in coffee shops stopped his peaceful journey to come to Flowery Branch to help design some Falcons uniforms. Are you fucking kidding? It's all y'all are believing this. First of all, we barely, first of all, we barely see Andre P. as it is. He's catching the ghost. We barely see him. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 so far in his own, not that it's a bad thing, but he's he's ducked off in his own world. We barely see him. Now that would have been that would have been believable had you said somebody like like a Quavo or somebody like that. <laughs> Okay, that would make sense. That would have been believable, at least. But they said under three thousand out of all people. Have you lost your mind? Like under three thousand out and about. Out and about. I don't even think he has a phone. Right. <laughs> How do you still contact him? This man is in a fucking homemade poncho. One of them. His, you know, you know those ponchos um, yeah. that you can get from like the Mexican market and stuff. You're right. I'm walking around in that, no haircut, playing the flute with a like uh, fucking backpack sack on. You think he got a phone for them to call? Right. You're like, hey, yeah, uh, let me put my input. On. Yeah. <laughs> That's no for you. Nah, I was like. Y'all are all stupid. <laughs> like, please drop these uniforms. I'm ready to like, <clears throat> and I'm hearing the release date is supposed to be on the 14th. God, why is it not today? Today is 404 day. It would have been perfect today. Yes. I, I, I'm hearing the 14th is the release date. They did say April. They've been saying April for the longest. And it's April. And I ain't seen yeah. shit. Yeah, but. I think they just randomly just gonna do it. Oh, they I think it's gonna be random day when we least expect it. I, I don't know. I, I heard here and there it's gonna be on the fourteenth. Don't know um, how true that. Don't know how accurate that is, but so don't quote me on that. But I did hear that a couple times. Yeah, I've seen it on Twitter too. But I'm just like, please just drop them. Like right. it's for all we ain't uh, we ain't doing nothing. We all at home. <laughs> But you know what I think it's going to be? I think it's going to be like a couple of days or so before the draft. That does make sense. To do it right around that time. We we did get an email, um, season ticket holders, and I think cast Atlanta cast members, I think, um, got an email from them about um, the code because apparently we get 50% off one jersey. Um, I hope it's more than one because what if you have more than one person in your house that's a Falcon fan? Anyways, when does right. the email come out? Okay, it's coming. This was a couple days ago. New uniform special offer. Next week, you will receive additional information on your 50% discount offer towards your jersey collection. Oh, okay. So the information might be the, the, the release date. Yeah. I'm like, I wonder if it'll be, it's got to be, I don't know. It's probably going to be the week after next. 
Yeah, right. Which would be like a couple of days or so before the draft. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm now if it's if it is on the 14th, that'd be great. But it like I said, it would make sense for them to do it right around the draft, you know, to build up. Right. Cause usually when they do that, that email, then it'll come out the week after. But I'm too impatient to, right. for this. Like we're not doing nothing. It's not like we have anything to do. So we have nothing but time on our hands. Yeah, you can go ahead and drop it. Let me burn through my credit some more, buying three jerseys <laughs> <laughs> and getting them here. You know, we we you know we we ain't doing we ain't doing nothing else. Right, we got no more time. Hey, the good thing, the good part in all of this, I did get like I said, I did get my podcast up and going. Yep. Upstairs. You know, trying to iron out some kinks or whatever. Like, I need somebody. Oh, let me plug this in too. If anybody knows how to edit videos, like DM me on Twitter. Let me know. Or if y'all know anybody, let me know, please. That'll be perfect. So yeah, I need somebody who knows how to edit. Mm. Yeah, no, it's not me. I don't do that. But yeah, if y'all know how to edit. Hit him up or. Be like, I edit, and we'll send you right. to him. Right. That, yeah. <laughs> and I'll, you know, function a little something, something, like, for doing it. Yeah. So let us know your podcast and where we can find you and the podcast social medias. Podcast, uh, name of the podcast, Flag on the Play. Right now I'm on YouTube. I'm thinking about Spotify. I'm not sure yet. But as of right now, on YouTube, Flag on the Play, like, subscribe. Um, follow on Instagram, Flag on the Play 10. That's Flag on the Play 10. So that's it as far as like the, um, the podcast goes into social media. Boom. So YouTube and Instagram. We'll put all the information in the description box below wherever you're listening. If you're on listening on iTunes, give us a five-star review. Um, Please. I need to separate this shit, the sports stuff, because I think people are getting confused. So I need to talk to Breeze about that, to separate the sports stuff on just his own little thing. Um, yeah, that's some technical stuff. Anyways, um Leave a five star review. Uh, YouTube, of course, right now we're live on YouTube. So if you're watching it on YouTube, hit that like button. Go to Flag on the Play, subscribe to them. Just like the videos. Like the video. That's all you gotta do. Like, if you're like, oh, I don't feel like I have time to watch it, subscribe, like the videos, and then watch them after. It's easy. Share it with your friends. If you're on Anchor, yep, all that. If you're on Anchor, Spotify, and other platforms, leave us a like and download it. You After you listen, download it or download it before you listen. Um, leave us a message on Anchor. You can go on Anchor, leave us a voice message, and let us know if you want that message on the podcast. And tell us what your thoughts are on the uniforms and they give Jamel a shout out. And SoundCloud, leave us a comment, like it, share it, all that good shit. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll have Jamel back on again with the whole crew. Breeze is starting to feel better. Uh, so we'll be back at it. The last episode that we have up now. Oh, fuck. This episode is probably coming out next week. So listen to all the last episodes. We got one with Josh and Amber and me. Y'all know that's the fucking who. One with Reggie. If you don't know who Reggie is, you're about to get to know him real quick. And one with Tony, a.k.a. that boy saying we're going to have him back here again as well. All the links will be below for everybody. Myself, DBN Report, Flag on the Play, all that good shit. Subscribe, like, follow, leave those reviews. Let us know. And don't forget, the first person that lets us know you subscribe to Flag on the Play, hit us up at DBN Report on Twitter, Lethal.dbnr on Instagram. 
and you will get a Falcons prize from us. Yes, and please, please, I need all of you guys' support. Please like, subscribe, like she said, all that good stuff. Hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live, when I drop a video. I will be uploading a video later on today, within like the next couple of hours. So be on the lookout. Yep, it's 404 a day. So that's that's today, 404 a day. So y'all already know what to do. Thank you guys so much for supporting. And we can't wait to hear for y'all to hear the next episodes from Flag on the Plate and the Dirty Bird Nation Report. We out.